feel comfortable at home. And I know uh, some of you may be still sleeping. Uh, it's a lazy Saturday morning, and uh, it's a beautiful day out here in uh, Suva, Fiji. And we would just like to say uh, thank you uh, for joining us. And uh, also to those of you that are outside PG, uh, you always look forward to this program, uh, to listen to the program every Saturday morning. We would also uh, like to uh, welcome you. There's quite a, a lot of feedback on a lot of people that uh, look forward to the program. Mm -hmm. And uh, little things that are shared uh, that are beneficial, uh, little things that are shared uh, become new insights for them. And they uh, trial it out, uh, they give the feedback on how you know, they're enjoying it, it and how it works uh, in their lives. So we are so grateful that, uh, you know, that you tend to think that the little things uh, shared uh, can be uh, a quite a help uh, moving forward. So thank you. And we are going to be able to do it. We say, Viti, ni andre tiko na matakan di kona, vi koro koro, sana koro tiko vango lomani tawa, ni soi tiko sa rene anu, vambula tiko ni vikenda na matakan di singi vina kandi kua. Vambula tala vikenda na vararonga tiko mai Amerika, vikenda ni na tiko mai Ingilandi, vakata langa ki na mai Australia, ki ni Selandi, vunga rindu vakaronga tiko mai vima matakan lele ndu ndu tiko na nonda ngauna, kena kena singa, etsa vikenda na ndu vakaronga tiko mai kena. Vaka usti vi vikenda na tiko mai Ingilandi, bala tiko ni nonda ya kawi tiko eh. So we can then dambe the barong to make it. Na program tarangona, tarangona, and play take to my and bula doavata and my San Teresa, San Francisco. Kau vakambota ni keva kaki ni vakarong to make it. Vakambula tal to nga rara ma weekenda and mataka ni singa ndai. Vina kwa kalevo na mazawa kena kena itavi sa mazawa and a singa na noa. Vina kwa kalevo na matapu vale mengravi me adamani singa na noa. Mate tal kaji mazawa ni non relevo lengone. So it's quite an exciting and most I think much anticipated Saturday after the first school week. Uh, a lot of things that our children went and experienced, like for me, my grandchildren, bringing back uh, news, the different teachers, new teachers, uh, uh, new subjects uh, for uh, one. And uh, so it's quite a lot of change that are happening at home that is totally different uh, from the previous weeks of break that they were having. Um, you know, they have the time on their hands, do what they want to do. And today, it's like the whole week uh, full of a conversation on what they anticipate in some schools, uh, straight into their um, inter-house uh, training, yeah and uh, rugby, there's a lot of things uh, happening. And we would like to uh, say this morning that it's, uh, you know, it's something that you cannot uh, avoid, avoid, but yeah. be part of it and find time to be part of it because it's more important and most important for our children. And uh, for those of you that are listening in from abroad, quite a few feedback saying um, it's quite good, the tips uh, that are shared, uh, because when you live outside PG, I mean, for those of you who travel, have experienced the same, the um, distractions, uh, things available, mm -hmm. and uh, you know it's very easy. The tendency to uh, move away from uh, what you plan for your life uh, can be easily, yeah. you know, like uh, there's a lot of uh, distractions uh, for you to be able to achieve that. But it takes a strong mind and very focused and supportive uh, adult uh, from home or guardians or uh, parent uh, teaching from home. So thank you for joining us this morning, and we would like to welcome you once again, Andre Vinaka. Eu vou ambulante quando eu vi que anda na tua rua na maré, mas na vi coro coro vítia. Ah, que eu vou ambulante quando eu vi que anda na tua rua coro coro aí lot three, secular road, lot ala vítia state. Que eu vou ambulante quando eu vi a minha mãe que andou na rua sala, ah, mãe uaia, a tua malolva, a tua manuda, ah, se me olhar lá vi a mole ser tu ganhi e na viti, ah, vou ter que que andou ser mais daqui, ah, essa vai rara. Vou ambulante quando eu vi coro coro. Ni saya mesti kau main, nama takkan ni saya ni dah na na walis di platform saya saya betul na big screen. Enak sih kami ni kuah. Saya bukan boleh tu kan? Enak sih kami ni dah. Tapi kami tu main betul lele, main main anuza, main bangka, main kandalu. Ni boleh benak. Bukan boleh tu kan? Ni bukan boleh tunggu. Bicara dengan dia ni anula lain. Ah, ilo main binti. Tapi kami tu main ngau, tapi koro koro. Ah, kami tu main beti kita ni rai. Ah, kami tu main koro. Bukan tak nak kita makongai betul kita kaya. Sih kami tapi kami belau. Kata kita motor ikir, tapi korang korang ada dua. Ni kata laut tu ambang mata kan istimewa dan dai. Ada binaka. Macam apa kan bulat tu kan ni? Yang istimewa binaka ni kuah. Tapi kau muda mai yang sesama semua lah. Tapi korang korang mai matuku, kata kita mai totoya, moala, tu sah bulat binaka. Malu ambula. Kalau esok mereka sah tapi mai way tui. Si esok sah je semai ni titi. Esok weekend dah ada ngunti tombe kan separaki, si way tui, si topai. Saya rasa bagaimana? Oh, saya bagaimana boleh tu kan? Elmatakan ni segini kuat. 
Bikin mudah mai loi zake. Uh, ono mata ke kandau fulanga uh, kembara ongea na muka komo mata ke muade wanyata. Nandu mbule menaka. Mbule mm. mm. tu gani wikoro koro. Kepa kani sema tiku mai. Kero usapa kan mbule tu gani. Eni mata kani sige niko. Sini mule dhabi. Vi na wikoro koro mai lakemba. Uh, mai tegunga mai tumbo, wai tambu, o wadi wadi, o nuku nuku, o yanrana. O baka no mata ke nasangalau. Ndu mbule menaka. Mbule mbule tu gani wikoro koro to doko. Na yao di dia. Matanga kina bono mbalabu. Chini kambi tuna koro mbono mbalabu. Chapa kambule tu gani. Kita kena biya ni anuvoleka. Viko mbiya katafanga. O munia batake kanadea batake mango. Ndu sa mbule minaka. Kimuni varoti mwenye tomba. Ni mbule minaka. Maitabi uni matanga kina lothara kengamea. Chapa kambule tu gani. Eni siku bina gani kwa. Vee koro koro to doko. Ena biya ni anulilebu. Viti lebu batake mbono lebu ni mbule minaka. Kero mbule tu gani matanga ni siku nikuwa. Ni itaka ni na rongo bina gani tu gani. Makare sese tu gani baka na kare stala na bitala noa and uh, uh, Sekola Road, yellow dala bitch eh. Yeah. Bole katonga e, e bibara sike, <laughs> uh, bikenda kenda kila. Tata koso nga mai nanu mula kona ratu ndobi, nge tako sa ini Jerusalem Road, e noko noko, kero baka mbule tu gani mataka nisi kena indai. Kali muna baka bujumi naka. Yeah. Bike muni nda usia matu kumai, nda u tali takatuna programu, uh, singa vida sauti kero tombale bata ke, ke tal tal kase mosi. Uh, Bina wale kimo ni na turanga, turanga mai na itasiri, turanga mai na mosi. Kenda sota ni waka mbula, ni ndo tali taka tu na program. Mm. Na, na family table talk wata kina tala na wasese na my TV. Na program ni my TV, kimo ni ndo usia matu kina waka mbimi. Ni ndo tali taka tu na wasa waka nonda. Uh, ndi na mbeka nilibu na ngona waka waka mbao tunga waka lau. Ia kimo ni kila waka mbina katu, kimo ni saa waka mbule tukani. Karo waka mbule tukani, waka mbina katu gani. Eni mataka nisi ni ndai. So once again, we take this time to say... Uh, Good morning to you yeah. that you are tuning in, those of you in your office, in your hospital bed, mm -hmm. those of you in correctional uh, centers, yeah. in Namboro, in Corvo, or in Sinu, Namosau in Ba, not forgetting Natambu in Lotoka, or Vature Kuka in Lambasa. We take this time to say Bulaminaka, and we hope whatever tips and sharing yes. that we share from here, uh, it will be very, very useful or beneficial mm. to you uh, when the time comes to go home. Yeah. So once again, we take this time to say Bula Binaka, and we hope uh, that we'll uh, uh, encourage you with the sharing this morning. Eh? Yeah, last week we spoke uh, a little bit uh, too much on the health, on how to, uh, you know, be consistent in maintaining it. And um, if you, like in Fiji, if you're reading through the uh, printed media, the newspapers, newspapers. or, uh, you know, there's quite a lot of uh, premature deaths. Yeah. Eh? And the people are dying even in their 20s, their mm -hmm. 30s, 30s, and that 40s, is very yeah. young. And uh, quite a fair bit are dying before they even reach 55, mm -hmm. uh, which is like the year before, uh, thinking that it's going to be the year for retirement. Yeah. And uh, back to what we were sharing, that a lot of times we take for granted thinking that life is going to be the same. Yeah. And you have a lot of plans uh, until you're 60, until you're 70 or you get an FNPF number, uh, money, and then you do what you want to do. Eh? And uh, in the process, we fail to think that anything can happen and uh, that you cannot control. But uh, for those of you that have been to the doctor and you've been told, OK, you know, you've got this um, you know, disease, disease and you need to change your diet, you need to change your lifestyle. Um, and most of the times, because I used to do this before, you know, when you're sick, uh, or when you're flu, you're not feeling well, you go to the doctor and then he prescribe, um, you know, antibiotics or any other um, medication. And then you come home after a second day or third day, you feel you good. Stop taking. Uh, and then <laughs> antibiotics is prescribed like for five days, eh, to the most. And, uh, and sometimes you feel better a little bit. I mean, not a bit better. You feel good uh, about two to three days into your sickness. And then it just stopped. And that's one thing that I've noticed because I noticed it in my grandchildren and my children as well, and my husband as well, and myself. I used to make that mistake. You know, like, as soon as you feel good, uh, like Everything you just say to yourself, to oh, you yeah. know, I'm good. Thinking that medicine was just given uh, for you to feel better. And once you feel better, you can chuck it out in the rubbish. I mean, that's how I think. But I, I realized that sometimes later, when I go back to the doctor, because, you know, he's a family doctor yeah. and he keeps track, then he says, um, Do you finish your Yeah, did you finish your medicine, the one that I gave the last time you came? And I said, you know, to be honest with you, I'll just take it for two days and I feel a little bit and I chuck it in the rubbish. And then he said, you shouldn't do that. You know, when we prescribe you medication, that five days, is suppo it's a process. It's supposed to do something in your body or something in your life. 
So which means regardless, if you feel better through the process, you continue. You should finish the medication because it's prescribed uh, to fix the disease that uh, you know, you've been checked uh, yeah. to have. So, um, and it's, uh, you know, last night we were having our devotion and uh, my, my daughter-in-law, uh, because we were going around, you know, say two gratitude. Um, just to gratitude for the week, uh, just to say uh, something to God, to thank him, um, you know, two things. So uh, my uh, daughter-in-law spoke up and then she said, I mean, it was time for her gratitude. And she said, you know, I used to notice like uh, medication. Uh, I used to, you know, my husband mm -hmm. used to take uh, uh, medicine if he's not well or he's gone to the doctor, got flu or anything else. And uh, it's like you just come and sit and running around, you know, uh, the medicine is there, you're not feeling good, you just go to the doctor, but the medicine is there. And uh, she said, and one thing that I want to thank God for and thank my husband, I see that now with whatever medication is given, they see it right through, and uh, they do the same for their, you know, for their children. Um, because Lake Hill was, uh, you know, sick for a while, uh, flu. And uh, they begin to treat uh, medication, medication to be, you know, uh, yeah. Uh, seriously than what it used to be before. Yeah. And when she was saying that, then it's sort of like, don't know me, I used to be like that before. Not until I, you know, I got told off by the doctor, by our family doctor. And uh, also I come back with this thinking, okay, you know, if I have to feel tired again or go through this fatigue and lethargic feeling again, I'm the one who's, you know, bringing it upon myself. So there are ways and means uh, that you begin to think around it uh, to better yourself. So because we were talking about the health and people dying younger, uh, than the yeah. normal, and, and I believe some of those true, I mean, the men and uh, women, they had their plans to get this family. Mm. Or at one stage, like if they're not married, they would have written something of their life that they're looking forward to, you know, like mm. in years to come. And without knowing that li that life can be taken away. Yeah. Because we plan without planning ourselves. Eh? Yeah. yeah. We plan for the thing to achieve. And uh, sometimes we uh, look forward to what we, uh, we will achieve what we will do in yeah. life. And on the same uh, time, we, we are not forgetting ourselves. Yeah. ourselves. Yeah. We are the one we are supposed to carry out that plan. Yeah. And we are full time in planning, but we never plan for our life. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's the... <laughs> <laughs> we are planning for the achievement, we are planning for education, we are planning to buy a house, we are yeah. planning to buy but a But you are forgetting the person who is going to be enjoying, that, enjoying plan. that plan. Yeah. And, uh, and that's why I'm we, we are forgetting to put us into the equation. Eh? Mm. And uh, we are taking things we're not supposed to take and uh, we are living a life which is uh, we're not supposed to yeah, live. We are abusing, we are abusing our, our, our bodies. Our body. yeah. And uh, at the same time, uh, we are looking forward to reach that uh, year, yes. uh, 40, 45, 50, 55. But we don't realize that the person that will will reach there is the person we are, that we are not fixing. Yeah. We are not looking after. Yeah. Yeah? And uh, it's very good that uh, our doctors remind us when we take uh, medication, um, we're supposed to finish that because not only repair, but also sustain, eh? yeah. brings healing. So when the sickness comes again, we are already protected. Eh? I'm not a doctor, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but because uh, Dr. Om to our family doctor yes. sometimes uh, speak to me, do you finish this? I said, as soon as I get well, then we're on the move again. Yes. Eh? And because uh, it's our nature, it's our human nature to continue to move forward, continue to achieve. And sometimes we forget to look after our body, mm. whether in the spirit or also in the physical. Mm. And sometimes we... Even in sports, we want to win, mm -hmm. but we are not looking after our body. That the person that will go out there to win. Mm. So we are not looking inside. We are always looking outside. So yeah. indirectly speaking, we are not good, very good custodians of ourselves. Uh, of ourselves yeah. Eh? Yeah. And that's the right word. Yeah. We are not a good custodian, whether in the physical, or finance, uh, health, uh, even spiritual life. Eh? Yeah, mm -hmm. because we were sharing uh, last Sunday, you know, uh, on the uh, God of Our Nation program. Uh, I was sharing that, uh, you know, we, we, are, we believe, we are Christians, and we believe that we are created by God, and uh, living that life for Christians, our manual would be the Word of God, will be the Bible, and it provides guidelines on how to live our life. Uh, it provides us, uh, you know, like it convicted us in the right way of living, and also, it uh, says warning in the Bible on yeah. uh, 
what to do and what not to do. And what to expect. Yeah. <laughs> what, yeah. And uh, that's the spiritual um, element. But for the physical, uh, we, you know, we are left to, to ourselves, yeah. to look after ourselves. There's no, no guidance, eh? unless, like, especially for adults, like you say, I know what's good for me. Mm -hmm. Even though if the doctor's telling you, oh, you've got, you know, very high sugar in your blood, mm -hmm. or you've got this, you've got that, you have to cut down on this. And you listen just because you're feeling so sick, and you come and you, you know, throw into your mouth whatever medicine that they give, as soon as you get better, like their advice and everything you hear, you know, it's out yeah. the door, and then you, <laughs> you live your life again. And because, you don't realize you're yes. shortening your life as you do that. Because sickness is, uh, is a process that our Creator put aside for us to readjust. Yeah. yeah. To readjust and to recheck our life. Mm. Yeah. So when we get sick, it's a time to uh, readjust. Something I'm doing that I need to change mm. or increase or decrease. Yeah. Eh? But as soon as we get well again, we forget <laughs> all the uh, precautions <laughs> and uh, all the effects yeah. of the sickness that will come. Eh? Yeah. So last week we we talked uh, much yeah. on the food that we eat uh, and uh, uh, the lifestyle that we live. Uh, example of uh, doing exercise to our body. Yeah, we haven't uh, been a very good custodians of our bodies as well. We planned um, because here in Suva at the seawall, uh, there's quite a lot of uh, road works. Yeah. And you sort of like, you know, like you just don't look forward to go and walk. Like it's, you tiptoeing all over the place and yeah, it's just not uh, the way it was. So you have only the path, yeah. you know, to, uh, to use or to walk. In. And uh, we plan, I said, okay, we go to Albert Park because we've been there uh, at one stage. We were walking there during COVID at one stage. We used to do one or two rounds and do our little uh, exercise. exercises uh, out there at the uh, Albert Park. So we planned. But that plan still happened. So like what we said, you know, we can be sharing with you and uh, the ability to see through, uh, you know, like you plan it, but sometimes you just don't, don't see through. Yeah. And it's yesterday we really nearly succeeded in achieving it uh, because I woke up at three, clear all the cooking, all our lunches and uh, the children's uh, breakfast, all the family's breakfast. By 4.30 I was good. So I woke him up and um, I said, are you going to uh, walk? and uh, pray, so he came and he was standing around, and then I was looking and said, are you waiting for somebody? <laughs> and he said, I'm waiting for you, and I said, no, I'm not going. So like I was a culprit yesterday, we nearly succeeded, but we didn't. And uh, yeah, last night we stayed up, thank you, Nate, I stayed up with my um, daughter-in-law, we just did a spring cleanup. I hardly go into the bathroom that my grandchildren use, but uh, last night I did, and I regretted walking in there. Well, clean up, because I was telling them, I'll have to show you how to do clean up, step by step on what to do. Well, yesterday I, I popped in for something, and that got me. I spent one hour in there, just spraying and um, scrubbing the wall. And uh, he knows, 3 o'clock this morning, I was thinking <laughs> to myself, uh, shall I shower and just wait, or what shall I do with my life? So I dozed off to sleep where I was lying down, and he woke, woke me up again this morning at about 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. A little bit after 6, he said, uh, just to remind you, we have a program. He said, okay, that was my wake-up call, and went to the bathroom to go and shower. And, uh, yeah, little things of life. That I believe, uh, because yesterday, uh, some of the senior pastors, we were talking about the cleanliness. Yeah. And when you speak on uh, cleaning last night, or early this morning, yeah, because I, I, I remember... Uh, Waking up, I can feel that you're still walking around cleaning. Because one thing that I've noticed, uh, with all due respect to us, it's okay. But one thing that I, I, I realize that uh, when it comes to cleanliness, yeah. our, our backyard, mm. our, uh, we where struggle, we go, eh? we, we struggle. Yeah. Uh, even if you go and watch sports or festival, I've noticed mm. it when I, you know, it's easy for us when we unwrap our roti or in uh, any parcel, it's very quick just to throw the rubbish. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, we are teaching in church uh, that, uh, that you must keep your rubbish yeah. because that is the way that you reflect the God that you serve. Yeah. Eh? So even when you walk in the street and you see houses, eh? the front yard, the backyard, how we look after house. And I, I believe the, this is a good time for us to mm. talk about the cleanliness. The cleanliness, not only as a person looking after yourself, standing before mm. the mirror, but also in your workplace, yeah. where we work, yeah. uh, where we live, yeah? mm. the cleanliness. Because I believe when you are clean, 
then that's uh, the open door for more things to yeah. arrive at your place. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's difficult for, for most because growing up, that's just the normal that they do. And uh, it's quite a struggle um, because I lived in a, a, like growing up, I experienced that. So I thought that was normal for everybody. Not until you mix, you come to work and you come to church and, uh, and you begin to see things differently. Then you think to yourself, okay, you know, it's not normal. Uh, I thought it was normal. Like everybody just know how to clean the house and how to keep things uh, in order. Mm. Uh, for me, that's normal. Uh, like say sitting here, I, you know, I know what's in every room, even my the grandchildren's cupboard. And there is a time in the week that I get them to fold their clothes in the cupboard, the flow of things. I know things piling up eh? and the cleanliness of it. Mm -hmm. Like say in the kitchen, uh, in the kitchen, whoever is on duty in the kitchen, like for my grandchildren, and uh, they know, they do thorough. Like what I said, they wake up 5.30 in the morning and uh, they're quite an expert. They are boys, they're not girls. And you see them, some bowing, bowing down, mopping, you know, cleaning. So that's why I was really interested yesterday, last night, who is on duty in the, you know, bathroom and toilet uh, because of that. Like they are, they are boys, but I train them um, with those duties. The duties that we term as girls' duties. Um, because when we do that, because I believe the way we were growing up, my father never differentiated the fact that, uh, you know, you're a girl and you're a boy. We all go to the farm, like everybody's a boy. And we all clean up and cook like they're girls, like my three brothers. Uh, most of my two brothers, because my eldest brother, uh, you know, hardly join us. And uh, so when we leave home to come, that's the balance. Like say, uh, I teach that to my son. And uh, if he comes, he says he knows exactly what to do here. And if a mission food come, or if he's required to, you know, slap up a few things to cook, he knows and uh, cleaning up. And for that, because we, we mostly just grow up as boys and grow up as girls, so when we uh, live our life, say if you stay by yourself, you only know the boy element teaching of living. You don't, you're not exposed to the girls. And the girls, like term girls, it's like, you know, washing the dishes or wash your mug. Because I see that, I notice that in our workplace as well. Um, you know, and how you just finish making your tea, you have you your tea, the sink. and you just throw your mug there. I mean, uh, you expect somebody else to come and clean up for you. Like, uh, normally, most most of the time, when you follow the bus, uh, yeah. When, yeah. you'll see up, the sure. bottle thrown out of yeah. the bus, or the wrap of food uh, yeah. out of the bus, and it's becoming an eyesore. Yeah. Because when we see that people taking rubbish as, as nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the way that we are brought up. Eh? Uh, that's the way uh, most of our, our, our people brought up yeah. and become our lifestyle. Mm. And that's why when we come to a, a festival, come yeah. to a sports, you know, yeah. uh, I tell you, it's, it's really uh, uh, a big problem. Mm. Maybe we don't see it as a problem. Mm. You see that we are not looking after uh, our rubbish, the yeah. cleanliness uh, or the thinking or the conviction. Mm. Yeah? Uh, Salola was a matau, Nindelo Tuango, putting on a menatoma, the popsicle, say, Senate, the yeah. bid, yo, on Dolomanga, or Bitter and the bid. Because there is no conviction. Yeah. Even though that will be in the bus, put your, put your rubbish or take your rubbish yeah. with your clean up. And these are the things that help us to become a better person. Yes. Just I be, believe so. Just be clean. And when you are taught at home, when you are taught yeah. as a community, mm. It's not something that uh, you have a lesson in school, <laughs> that you have a lesson in the church. No, these yeah. are the, some of the basic teaching, and I believe with the, through this family table talk, yes. when we share, because we went to uh, to what sports me and a few a few senior pastors, yeah. eh? and then we were sitting there. When we came, it was clean. Eh? You sit in the stadium, it was clean, but we sitting in in an area where the parents sit. Uh, two schools there, and on the other side are the students. When we finished with the game, there were three games, eh? when we finished with the game, I just, uh, it really caught my eyes yeah. that we, the parents, were sitting there and the rubbish. Yeah. You know? Like, uh, there's no conviction that you can keep it and uh, go yeah. outside and put it nicely. Yeah. Eh? And I believe because we were not taught or we have a, a, a platform to talk about it, or even in a Bosovac or even the most, or even from church, 
no? or even uh, on, on a community yeah. Li uh, yeah. living, eh? that this cleanliness, it can take us into, into a very good uh, areas of our personality. Yeah. When we go and work in a workplace, yes. if and we go overseas yeah. and we have families, yeah. we will take that cleanliness with us. And it will be a good teaching, like a, yeah. a, a, a behavior pattern. Yeah. Yes, I believe, uh, I mean, maybe you listening this morning, uh, it's not an issue with you because you're just living life like that. You know, like you say, what are they talking about? That's normal. And you know, like, you just open your stuff, you throw it, and that's normal. And, uh, but one thing, like for, for the church that we belong to, we usually have our Mondays as our, our training for our leaders. Yeah. And, and that is the time that I, I choose to share some of these things. And I was telling them, like, if you were just living your life the way you want to live your life, that's fine. But when you come in and being a leader uh, to lead uh, in terms of uh, heading a, um, you know, a church, church, a worship center, or a zone for that matter, then your lifestyle become important to us. Uh, as leaders. leaders of the ministry, because you become the uh, custodian of yeah. uh, what the church uh, stands for, which means that uh, even though there is your personal life, but it becomes a concern um, because the members are coming into your home, the members are you know listening to you, the church members or the ch yeah they're coming to worship with you, and things that you may think that is okay, but it's not okay. Uh, in the walk, and you know I'm I'm speaking from yeah. uh, the spiritual element, and not only that. But uh, also, it's just the a normal person in the physical essence. And, uh, and sometimes I've noticed that uh, a lot of us, I, I emphasize it to the women, but most of us, we struggle. And a lot of people, they even struggle uh, where I am. Uh, I mean, for church members, when in the workplace or even at home. And it's, oh, it's so difficult working with Auntie Rai. Uh, it's so difficult staying with Auntie Rai. Uh, because of that. Because like for me, if I, if I walk... I throw uh, the main door, and on my way to my room, or on my way, sometimes I'll come, leave my bag, and I start pottering around, you know, like the kitchen, clean up, uh, sitting room. And after our devotion, then I look at my bag, and I said, why, I haven't even been to my room. Then I'll finish my journey to my room. And finishing that journey can be like 9 or 10 o'clock, then I'm reaching my room. Or if I walk into the office from the door that I, you know, usually enter, I'll come and say, can somebody go and wipe that uh, door? Because our doors are white. And I say, get a G4, get something, and wipe down the, the door, please. And uh, can somebody wipe the toilet seat when I come, the, you know, the body of that toilet seat, because the toilet is open. Can somebody go and wipe it down? Like, on my way, when I look at things, I'll see things that is not, yeah, that is not right. Like, it catches my attention. Or I'll see things that are not supposed to be there. And if I come to the place where our staff sit, or our administration staff sit, I say, what is that box doing there? What is this thing doing there? Uh, check underneath your table. When I have the opportunity to come up, when I look, I'll just know things uh, that are not in place or not in the proper place. Like yesterday, when I finished work yesterday, no matter how busy, like when we have our devotion last night, I was sharing uh, with my family. We broke uh, our fasting uh, yesterday for the church, and there is a 48 hours. And uh, I walked into the office. I started working. Uh, thank you. I always uh, remember to bring my latte uh, because he'll just come on the call. Okay, uh, AM latte coming. Okay, PM latte coming. And uh, thank you. So after work, when we were coming, and there was about uh, what time? About uh, 6.30. Six? 6.30, yeah. yeah. When we were coming uh, yesterday, when I got into the car, I turned to him and I said, What did you, you eat today? Did you eat today? And he said, yeah, I had my chops, I had my... So he started counting out his, you know, the food that he had. And I looked at him and I said, I forgot to eat today. And that was my normal. When I'm fasting, I don't really, you know, eat. I'm on liquid. But when I am not fasting and I'm breaking my fasting, I forgot that I broke fast. And I remember a few times yesterday, I asked, uh, Hey, you people have eaten something? Or you people have broken your fast uh, yet? And there was two or three times question. And I thought I'm still glued to my seat. So standing up to come, to come down for us to come back home in time for our devotion at 7 o'clock, I did a thorough cleaning in my office. So get the wipes, wipe down the table, clean up, clear my rubbish, everything, lock the door. We're done. And then walk in here because yesterday we planned to have a healthy, healthy meal. meal. So we had fish with otter and uh, meaty. And my daughter is an expert in doing meaty. And uh, Carlos, she taught Carlos. And just 
The day that, that, day that I needed help, Carlos uh, went home for the weekend because it was his birthday on Thursday. So he's uh, taking the weekend off to uh, spend it with his family. And uh, I called my daughter and said, are you coming home soon? He said, no, I have lots of work to do. And I said, okay. In the record, I was trying to, you know, <laughs> I think, okay, she's going to come in. Then do the meeting. All I do, and, you know, just relax. But she wasn't. So came, did the meeting, and uh, we had our devotion. After devotion, then we had our meal and the cleanup, and goes on until 3 o'clock this morning. Um, but, you know, sometimes when you... Like what you said, eh? With that, it's quite difficult. I, I've noticed it's yeah. quite difficult to teach Be it because uh, because it's not your life. Yeah, because it's your life. Yeah, it's very easy for you to spot what yeah. is uh, not in place. Yeah, or you you are easy to spot the dirtiness or the untidy of yeah. things. Yes. Yeah, because that's one thing that I've noticed. Because I travel a lot, I go to homes, yeah. I go to office. No. <laughs> You will see the homes that are clean and yeah. trim and tidy. And you can also see just by walking outside, yeah. just by visiting villages. And when you walk into house, you'll see the pots, you'll see the painting, uh, the, the, the house that is untidy and dirty. The house is very clean. You, you spot that because you come from a house that is clean. Mm. Because you live with somebody who is... Uh, is her life is is yeah, always clean because you struggle as well, you know. Yeah, because yeah, we, he, he, he struggle a bit. Uh, not only him, my children, my grandchildren, and then after a while they sort of like take it as a lifestyle, like it becomes normal. Yeah, because when you uh, when you were brought up, like for me when I was brought up, those kind of thing is not really an yeah. issue. Eh? You come from the village, do, eh? uh, like the towel you can hang in in, in front Outside, porch. Yeah. yeah, you can hang in anyhow. Yeah. Or even if there is a, you know, don't to near one, yeah? yeah? When you hang it, you just say, hang in anyhow. <laughs> and uh, at the time that we get together, know one another, and we get married, then I start to see the different different side of hanging, how to, even how to hang the clothes, yeah. the pattern of ha yes. hanging the clothes, eh? And uh, yeah, all those things is tidy. We're trying to share something to the people that are listening today. They might think, how can you do that, you know? Uh, I mean, it's difficult to do that. How can they do that? Do what we are trying to say. So it, it is understandable that you cannot change your lifestyle overnight. overnight yeah. Yeah. It's a process, it's a process but yeah. you have to allow yourself. And then, some, I mean, you may rightfully say, oh, I don't really need to do that. I've survived all these years. You know, I don't need to be clean or have everything organized. Uh, because I used to be a hoarder. Like, I hoard things. Um, the thinking is, if I... If I look at the, you know, the juice bottles, say, say the juice bottles, like the two liter, and... Uh, can be used yeah, another time. Yeah, my thing is, like, you know, somebody can use this. Or uh, empty uh, containers of big peanut butter, you know, the bottle, they can hold salt or hold little things at home. And then I'm thinking, oh, somebody can use this. Uh, because I remember when your mom used to come and stay with us from the mm -hmm. village, and he, she taught me a lot. From my family, we don't really do that. But when your mother came in and stayed with us for a while, that's when I noticed the things that I didn't really think that it was important growing up, I saw the um, emphasis that it's, it's important to some. You know, like that, like we, we're saying, like your trash is a treasure to somebody. And uh, because I still remember, um, because she comes from the village and she stays with us for months uh, before she goes back. And sometimes like the empty flora container butter, um, the old newspapers, mm. and then she'll be saying, you know, don't throw it away. Uh, keep it. it. I village. can take it to the village. Uh, I can take that to the village. I can take that to the village. And that sort of like changed my, you know, perspective on what I, it's so easy for me to chuck in the bin, but it helps somebody. And, uh, and I, I remember used to come and say, why are we keeping this rubbish, you know? And she'll always hide it from you. Uh, she'll pack them in the boxes mm -hmm. and uh, hide it from you because when you come, say, that's rubbish, throw it in the rubbish. And then she'll be saying, oh, bossa, and uh, she used to lug those things because she knows it's, you know, it benefits Useful, somebody. Yeah. And, and that helped me. So come the time for me to do, uh, you know, like have those things to chunk. And I used to keep these empty bottles, the two-liter juice bottles, uh, the empty ones, and I keep them. And uh, I packed them in uh, a big uh, garbage bags. 
and sometimes, you know, we have uh, people from Neta City. Uh, Neta City is only to come and right into the interiors because we visited and we walked. Mm -hmm. It's quite a distance. And you, you know, actually wade through the river and go up, you know, wearing gumboots. When we were going, we have to wear gumboots because we were walking through, uh, you know, the Dalo mm -hmm. uh, patches. And uh, being there, then you look around the, the room because it doesn't have a double wall. You could read the Tavaila, Tavanyuai, yeah? And looking and I said, okay, you know, what are these bottles? So after eating, then I asked one of the ladies, I said, why, you know, why are these bottles? Uh, and then uh, she said, oh, it's quite a distance to, go and, fetch to water. go and fetch the water. So what do we do? We fetch in those bottles. And these are worn out uh, one liter bottle, Fiji water bottles.